This is the sixth in a series of lectures um, on an introduction to exterior differential systems. In this lecture, we want to think about the problem of isometric immersion, of how to get a surface to bend without stretching. And you know, this is a very short lecture because we're only going to arrive at the, um, the exterior differential system and examine it briefly. So we want to think about, given a surface, which we'll imagine as being already in three-dimensional Euclidean space, we want to try to bend it without stretching it. In other words, we'll, um, and stretching should include also squishing, we don't want to change the lengths of curves drawn on the surface. So we want to find all the isometric immersions of the surface, that is to say, all the maps that preserve the lengths of all the curves. The curves on the surface don't stretch or squish. And uh, so, the, so that's a very classic problem in differential geometry. And we won't obviously be able to solve this global problem, but we'll get so, at least some, some idea of how to set up the problem in the terms of exterior differential systems and how to get some sort of understanding, at least locally, of how many isometric immersions there are. Let's see in the simple example. Here's a picture which is viewed from various different, different angles of what looks a bit like a bug, like some kind of a housefly. But um, in fact, that's actually an image of an isometric immersion, again, viewed from various different angles. It's one isometric immersion of a little piece of that paraboloid there. Um, so we've somehow cut out a chunk of the paraboloid, I think something roughly like a disc drawn on the paraboloid, and wrapped it around itself in some simple way and constructed that nice little picture. Um, so that's the kind of thing we want to do cut out a chunk of a surface and then sort of wrap it around itself and come up with a with a nice uh, isometric immersion of it. So the lengths of curves drawn on the surface don't change. Okay, so given a surface, if we had an isometric immersion, this is an important idea. In exterior differential systems work, we often pretend we have the solution. Suppose we knew how to do this. Suppose we somehow could already construct these objects. We'll show that we can somehow out of that data build an integral manifold of an exterior differential system. And then we'll go backwards and show the integral manifolds of the exterior differential system come about at least locally in this way. So we're going to pretend we have a solution and show that it gives an integral manifold of some exterior differential system and then we'll reverse the process. So given a surface and if we already had an isometric immersion of it somehow or some open subset of it, um, what would we be able to construct? So we imagine we've got a surface and an isometric immersion. An adapted frame for an isometric immersion means a frame, an, uh, an orthonormal frame on uh, S and a corresponding one in the immersed image. So we've got both an E1, E2, E3 frame on S with E3 normal, and we've got an E1 prime, E2 prime, E3 prime frame on the isometric immersion image of the same point with E3 prime perpendicular to the image tangent plane. So those adapted frames form a submanifold inside the product of the frame bundle of the surface and the frame bundle of three-dimensional Euclidean space. We're assuming we're given the surface. It's actually written down for us. So we can construct its frame bundle explicitly. And we know the frame bundle of Euclidean space explicitly. So this immersion, isometric immersion, whether we know it or not, we know somehow that it constructs a submanifold consisting of all the adapted frames. The adapted frames then would be an E1, E2, E3 on the surface and the corresponding E1 prime, E2 prime, E3 prime on the isometric image isometrically immersed image. So that would uh, co correspond to some three-dimensional manifold X, right? This three-manifold X sits inside this product of, of frame bundles. And we want to show that that X must be an integral manifold, an integral three-manifold of an exterior differential system. It may be a bit surprising that it's, it's a three-manifold we're working with. We started with a problem about surfaces and we're not constructing a surface, we're constructing a three-dimensional manifold X contained inside this product frame bundle, the set of all adapted frames. Why is it three? Because you can pick any point of the surface on which to build such a frame. You can pick the E1 and E2 uh, at that point of that surface, and of course there's a one-dimensional family of those, and then the E3 comes for free up to sign. So it's a three-dimensional manifold inside this product frame bundle. To each isometric immersion, we've constructed a three-manifold. That three-manifold has an complicated collection of equations on it, B1, 
because it sits inside uh, inside that product frame bundle on the frame bundle of the surface s we have omega 3 is 0 on the frame bundle of its isometric image we have the corresponding what I'll call omega 3 prime is 0 if we use primes to represent everything that's going on in the image of the isometric immersion so on the image it's also a surface image is also a surface and has its adapted frame bundle on which omega 3 prime is 0 but because we've made the frames correspond, we've made an E1 correspond to an E1 prime and E2 correspond to an E2 prime under the derivative of the isometric immersion, we find then that omega 1 prime and omega 1, omega 2 prime and omega 2 match up under such a thing. So on the graph X of the isometric immersion, we get all of these uh, all of these equations satisfied. We get the vanishing of omega 3, omega 3 prime, omega 1 prime minus omega 1, omega 2 prime minus omega 2. And the exterior derivatives of all of those, if you differentiate all those equations, you get even more uh, equations satisfied by the three manifold x. So that means that x is an integral manifold of the exterior differential system generated by those equations and their exterior derivatives. So the, ex the, the um, exterior differential system is generated by uh, vanishing of omega 3, omega 3 prime, omega 1 prime minus omega 1, omega 2 prime minus omega 2, and the exterior derivatives of all of those. So we get an exterior differential system, which we can write out explicitly uh, on the product of frame bundle of the surface and frame bundle of Euclidean space. The graph of an isometric immersion's lift to the frame bundle will actually be a three manifold sitting inside uh, this, um, sitting inside the product of frame bundles and will satisfy this exterior differential system. So we can now check the carton kahler theorem and see what it says about that exterior differential system. Because carton kahler uh, gives us a, a way to, to, to test whether or not the system is an involution. And we said that if it is an involution, then it tells us in some sense how many integral manifolds there are. So we should be able to find out how many integral three manifolds there are. Then, of course, we'd have to have the problem of proving that every one of them, at least locally, is in fact coming from an isometric immersion. So but that's a problem for another day. Uh, for now, let's just check the carton kahler theorem on that exterior differential system. What we've said is that if we had an isometric immersion, it would have an associated a capital X uh, three manifold sitting in the product of frame bundles, and it would be an integral manifold of that system. But what does the carton kahler theorem say about the system? It has characters S1, S2, S3 are 2, 1, and 0. But here are the integral elements. We can calculate what they are. It, the various gammas uh, have to satisfy these. Now, I'm not going to check this for you. You'd have to check it. You, you can calculate out the exterior derivatives from the, the expressions we wrote on the previous page. And you can actually check and see what are all the integral elements, all the integral elements of, of dimension, uh, dimension 3. And you can check that they all look like this. So I won't do the algebra for you. And again, it's done in more detail in the lecture notes. But you can work it all out and check that these are the integral elements. Every integral element is uniquely parameterized by setting the gammas to be various multiples of the omegas and alpha according to these, these formulas here. Um, so in particular, the a, i, j's, in fact, will, of course, correspond to components of a shape operator of any isometric immersion that you constructed. So if we had an isometric immersion, it would give us an integral manifold, and it would have to have its shape operator showing up as the components here in the descri description of what integral elements it would, its tangent planes would represent. So, um, so that gives us... Um, an expression for all the integral elements. And you can see there's a three-dimensional family of integral elements at each point because you can pick A11, A12, and A22 arbitrarily. For any values of those three variables, A11, A12, A22, you get an integral element. So you have a three-dimensional family of integral elements at each point. So it's a three-dimensional family of integral elements at each point given by those uh, cho choices of those three, uh, those three components of the integral element. And uh, so it's a three-dimensional family of integral elements at each point, and we're on a manifold of, uh, of, of, of dimension you can check, the, the dimension of the product frame bundles. Um, and you find that S1 plus 2S2 is uh, 4, and it's bigger than 3, and so carton kahler fails. All right, so carton kahler fails because it would predict that the, um, the predicted dimension should in fact be four, 
uh, there should be a four-dimensional space of integral elements for Cartan Kähler. It's predicted dimension, but the actual dimension at a point, each point, is three. Now, of course, I've done those calculations only at a point, but it's the same at every point. So, uh, so it works out to give you this computation: four is bigger than three. Cartan Kähler fails. What does that happen? What What does that mean? What happens when Cartan Kähler fails? Uh, what we found is that Cartan Kähler makes no prediction. Uh, so the th the theorem predicts that if the predicted dimension equals the actual dimension, then you get um, integral manifolds, and you can count in some sense roughly how many. But in this particular example, uh, because the, the system is not an involution, the, you know, the, the, the count doesn't succeed, the dimension of the space of integral elements is not the predicted dimension, cartan kähler theorem makes no predictions about what happens here. It tells you nothing. It doesn't say whether or not there are any integral manifolds. So this is an example where the theorem fails dramatically. Um, it doesn't tell us anything about what to do next, and we're left with no information about the isometric immersion problem. So what we need to do is to figure out how to deal with this. What happens when cartan kähler fails? What do we do next? What we'd like to say is that we have some simple routine that we can write down that would enable us to, to construct another exterior differential system that we could then try again with, and uh, that we might have a better chance with. And so that's what we'll do next time. We'll talk about so-called prolongation, what to do when the Cartan-Kähler theorem fails.